I found it. I found it. I've been looking for it for a long, long time. Have you ever been looking for something and searching for something and researching for something and you finally found it? It is hilarious. It's joyful. And I have found it. I have been looking for what is it that keep people together? What is it that keep a church family together? The church is splitting and uh, people are splitting. And what is it that keeps a marriage together? People are splintering and people are leaving and divided. I was looking for something that will keep people together. And I found it. Stay with me. This is Brother James Gray, the minister of the Eastside Church of Christ. We want to talk today about something that is grand, that keep people together. Get your Bibles, and I want to share with you something that Jesus said in John chapter 13 in verse number 34 and 35. Uh, we're in a series uh, dealing with peace. Peace be still, and the subtopic or the sub thing we've been dealing with is uh, be at peace among yourselves. And so I've been looking for this, and Jesus gave me the answer. I was reading one day, and I said, this is it. John chapter number 13 in verse number 34. Listen. What Jesus says, a new commandment I give unto you, talking to his disciples, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Did you hear that? Did you hear what keep people together? Did you hear what keep disciples together? Did you hear what keep Christians together? Love will keep us together. That's my subject today. Love will keep us together. Love will keep the church family together. Love will keep your family together. Love will keep your friends together. Love will keep us together. That's the title of our lesson on today. Oh yes, love will keep us together. Jesus said these words. He says, uh, I command you to love. He says, this is a new commandment. A new commandment. How can love be a new commandment? God has always commanded his people uh, to love one another. Even back in the, the book in the Old Testament, Leviticus chapter number uh, 19 and verse number 18, God tells his people to love each other. So how is this particular scripture or this particular command a new commandment? It's not new in, in reference to time or age. It's not new. It's an old commandment. God has always commanded his people to love one another. 
but it is new in quality. Quality. The kind of love that Jesus is commanding is a new kind of love. Matter of fact, it was so new that uh, the Greeks uh, could not find a word for it. It was not in their Greek lexicon. And they finally came up with this word, agape, agape love. And this is the kind of love that Jesus is talking about. He says, this is a new commandment. It's new because uh, it's a new perspective from the way the world loves. It's a different kind of love than what the world loves, this agape love. Jesus now takes love to a new level, a new height, this kind of love that Jesus is talking about, this agape love. It takes love to a, 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 a new dimension, this kind of love the world does not know. This kind of love is out of this world. And that's why Jesus said it's a new commandment. It's a new commandment that I love you. It's new. It's out of this world. You know, the world says, you know, you love your neighbors, but you hate your enemies. And Jesus came along and said these words, you have heard, you're supposed to love your, your, your neighbors and hate your enemies. But Jesus says, I, I want you to love your enemies. This kind of love that Jesus is talking about is out of this world. How in the world can you love your enemies? This kind of love that Jesus is talking about, love, this kind of love, love your enemies. This kind of love that Jesus is talking about is a strange kind of love. This kind of love, love people when they're bad. Oh yes, you, you can love anybody when they're good, but the kind of love that Jesus is talking about, you love individuals even when they're bad. You know, uh, Jesus loved his disciples. He loved Peter when Peter denied him. He kept on loving Peter. He loved Judas, even though Judas betrayed him. This kind of love that Jesus is talking about is out of this world. This kind of love also. That Jesus is talking about is a permanent love. Always and forever. It never stops loving. It's a strange kind of love. It's out of this world. The kind of love that Jesus is talking about. That's why he calls it a new commandment. Oh, yes, he calls it a new commandment. Jesus says, this love that I am talking about is a new commandment. Something else that Jesus says. He says, Love is an identifying badge. He says this, by this love or by your love will all men know that you are my disciples. When they see your love, when they see your love for one another, when they see your love for God, that is a badge, that is an identifying badge that says you are my disciples. Oh, yes. When the world sees us loving one another, when the world sees us loving one another with this kind of love, loving always, loving through thick and thin, then they will uh, attach themselves or attach the idea of love, love, you are Jesus' disciple. When the world sees that kind of love, oh yes, our identifying uh, badge is not the way we dress. Men cannot identify us by the way that we dress. Uh, 
By the way you dress, it doesn't mean that you are a Christian. It doesn't mean that you belong to Jesus. Or you can wear your robe and you can wear your, the cross around your neck and you can carry your Bible and, and all of that. But it doesn't mean that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm kind of surprised that Jesus didn't say that uh, uh, by this faith will all men know you. I'm surprised that Jesus says, by faith will all men know you. Oh, faith is important. Faith is the foundation of the Christian uh, belief. But Jesus didn't say faith. He didn't say faith, but he said love. Love will identify you as the children of God. Uh, well, something else. I thought and I was surprised that Jesus didn't say uh, Biblical knowledge. Your, by, by your biblical IQ will all men know that you are my disciple. But Jesus didn't say that. Jesus didn't say that because people can know the Bible and, and not be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Biblical knowledge and biblical IQ does not identify you with Jesus Christ. But he says love. Oh, love. Oh, love. When you love one another, people can, the world can look at you and say, they are the disciples of Jesus Christ. They are Christian. They belong to Jesus. Something else about this kind of love. The love that keeps us together is beyond words. It's beyond uh, articulation. Verbal articulation, uh, the kind of love that Jesus is talking about is beyond that. Oh, I hear people all the time saying, I love you. Love you. I hear it all the time. People say, love you. I love you, honey. I love you. I lo and people say that all of the time. But this is what the Bible says. Get your Bibles. First John 3, 18. Let me read it. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Did you hear that? Anybody can say, I love you. Anybody can say, love you. Anybody can verbalize, and I hear it all the time. I hear it all the time. People say, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. But do you really mean it? Do you really know what love is? Do you really know what love is? Somebody wrote a song, I want to know what love is. Love is more than verbal articulation. Can I tell you about that little boy that oh, emailed his girlfriend? He emailed his girlfriend, man, he was getting deep. He was telling his girlfriend how much he loved her. Uh, uh, baby, you're just on my mind. You're in my mind. You just control. I, I can't do anything but think about you all day long. And you're just in my heart. Love, I, 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 if you were on the top of the mountain, I would climb the highest mountain to get to you. I said, if you were in the midst of the sea, I, I, would, I would swim the deepest part of the sea just to get to you, baby. Oh, he was letting it on. Then he ended his email by saying, I'll come to see you when it stopped raining. <laughs> I'll come to see you when, I, when it stopped raining. He's just talking. Talk is cheap. If he's going to climb the highest mountain and swim the deepest sea, what a little rain. A little rain is going to stop you. You just, you just lying. <laughs> you just lying. But people do that. But the Bible says, God says, don't just love in word. Don't just articulate love. Don't just tell people that you love them in word. You need the love indeed. Put your love in action. Put your love where your mouth is. Put your love in action. I'll tell you something. You say you love me. You, you better give me something. I don't, I don't mean any harm now. Uh, because love is giving. 
Love is giving. Love is more than articulation. Love is giving. If you say you love someone, you better be really to, really to give them something. Give them something. Give them a gift. Give them your attention. Give them your attention. Give them your time. Spend some time with the people that you say you love. Give them a, your attention. Uh, listen to them. You say you love someone, listen to them. You say you love me, give me some time, give me some attention, and yes, give me some money. Yes, I, that's what I said, money. Hello, are you still there? Are you still there? Give me, because love is giving. Oh, yes, it is. Love is giving. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You cannot love without giving. Oh, yes, you can give without love, but you can't love without giving. You got to give something. You got to give something. Give your attention. Give your time. Give your money. Give yourself. Give yourself. You keep talking about you, how you love somebody. Love is giving. Oh, yes, it is. Talk is cheap. Put your love where your mouth is. Something else the Bible says. Listen to this. First John chapter three and verse 17. For whosoever had this world's good. And see it as brother in need. And shut it up his bowels of compassion toward him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? Did you hear that? How dwelleth the love of God? You say you love God and you see me. I'm in need. I'm needing someone and, and, and needing something. And you walk and you pass me. How dwell? How dwelleth the love of God in you? How can you say you love God? How can you say you love me? How can you say you love God? You see I'm in need. You see I need something and you pass on by. You better shut your mouth. You better shut your mouth talking about love, how much you love me and how much you love God. You see I'm in need and you pass me by. You're just lying. Because love is giving. Oh, yes. I want you to listen to something that the Bible says in the Old Testament. Song of Solomon, chapter number eight and verse number seven. Can I, can I read it to you? Uh, can you listen for just a minute? Just a minute. Listen to this. Many waters cannot quench love. Neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all of his substance of his house for love, it would utterly be condemned. <laughs> Did you hear that? First of all, he says, many waters can't quench love. That's how hot love is. Oh, love is hot. Love is burning. Somebody call 911. Love is, love is on fire. He says many waters, much water cannot quench love because love is hot. He's using a metaphor here. Love is hot. That's how deep love is. Then he goes to and he transitioned to another metaphor. He says that uh, waters can drown it. Waters, much water, cannot drown love. Much water cannot kill love. It cannot destroy love. It can't drown love. Love is just that strong. Then he says this. This is a clincher. Even though I give all of my, the substance in my house for love, my house will be condemned. Did you get the message there? What he's saying is that I will give everything in my house for love, for the one that I love. Everything goes. Oh, I got a house. I got a big, matter of fact, I got two or three big screen TVs in my house. And if you ever come to rob my house, if you ever come to rob my house, you come to rob my house, me and my wife, and, my, and you come to rob my, you can have my big screen TV. 
You can have two or three of them. Two or three big screens, you can have them. Don't you touch Miss Gray. Don't you touch my love. Don't you touch my And you can have all my furniture. And I got some good stuff there now. I paid some good money for that furniture in my house. And you can have it all. But don't touch my love. Don't touch my wife. Don't touch my children. Don't touch my love. Oh, yeah, I got a couple of cars in the garage. You can have them. Don't touch my love. Do you get the point? Do you get the point of this kind of love? Well, uh, the kind of love that keeps people together is a, is a four-dimensional love. Let me say it again. It's a four-dimensional love, a multi-dimensional love. This is what the Bible says. Ephesians 3 and 17 that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, underscore that, rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height of love. Woo! Multidimensional. First of all, he says the length of love. Take your measuring tape. Take your measure. Take your measuring tape and measure the length of love. The Bible says, First Corinthians thirteen and four. Love is patient. That's how long love is. Love is patient. Love is long suffering. That's how long love is. Oh, it's a long love. Oh, yes, this kind of love that we're talking about. Oh, this kind of love that we're talking about. The Bible says it is a long, long love. Oh, yes, it is. Then now, now get your uh, measuring tape now. Measure love again. Measure the height of love. The height of love refers to commitment and trust. That's the height of love. Listen to what the Bible says again, 1 Corinthians 13 and 7. Love believeth all things. That's not saying that love is gullible. That's a Hebrew expression to simply say love is a committed love, a trusting love. That's how high love is. It's trusting. It's committed at all times. Well, take your measuring tape again. Now measure the width or the breadth of love. You measure the breadth of love, you are measuring how strong love is. Oh, love is strong. It's so strong that the Bible says this, love bears all things. It can bear, it's so strong, it can bear all things. It can bear uh, all kinds of financial troubles. It can bear differences. It can bear uh, difficulties. That's how strong love is. Love beareth all things. Oh, it's so strong. It can bear, it can bear, it can keep on bearing. That's how wide love is. Well, one more time. Get your measuring tape. Now we're going to measure how deep love is. The Bible says this. Love never fails. That's how deep love is. Love never fails. Love never stops loving. Love never stops loving. It never fails. That's what the Bible says. Love is multidimensional. Oh, yes, it is. And then this particular uh, text says that uh, love has to be rooted and grounded. 
rooted and ground. The word rooted means it's an agricultural term referring to the root system of a tree or a plant. Love has to be rooted. Deep roots. Roots serve two purposes. First of all, the root system stabilizes uh, the tree or stabilizes the plant. Or when the old oak tree or when trees go through storms, it's the root system that keeps it stabilized. When the winds are blowing and when, when the storms come, the tornadoes come and the hurricanes come, it's the root system that stabilizes the tree. And I tell you, my brothers and sisters, love is like a root. It will stabilize your relationships through the storms of life. The difficulties, the financial storms, the problem, the disagreements. Oh, love. Love will stabilize your relationship. Yes. Then love serves as a nourishment. It nourishes the plant. And oh, my brothers and sisters, uh, love will nourish your relationship. Many years ago, I planted some fescue grass in the summer. My first attempt to grow some grass, I planted some uh, fescue. And man, it came up. It was beautiful. I think I planted it somewhere in the month of June. It was beautiful. But lo and behold, around August, it was all burned up. And I'm wondering, what in the world happened to my beautiful fescue grass? I learned this. The reason it burned up is because of the root system. The roots were too shallow. And it burned up. The roots were not long enough to go down deep in the ground, maybe four to five inches to get the, 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 the moisture or the water because uh, the top of the soil can be dry, but there was some moisture down deep. And the root system was not, was not deep enough to get the moisture. Can I tell you this? This is my point. When you got shallow roots, when you got shallow roots, oh, love will die in the heat of the summer. Oh, love will die. But oh, when your, when your love roots are deep, it can go down in, and get the water. It can survive. It can survive the hottest summer. Oh, I'm talking to you today. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, let, let me ask you this. Uh, I want to ask God. Lord, how deep is your love? He would tell me, my love is so deep. I gave my only begotten son. I gave my only begotten son. Jesus would say, my love is so deep that I gave my life. Oh, yes. What would you give for Jesus is the question I want to ask you. Oh, there was an American missionary that went out to the Native Indians, Native Americans, and he was trying to teach them the gospel. He said to them, what would you give for Jesus? He preached to them about Jesus. He drew a circle in the sand and he said, what would you put in that circle for Jesus? What would you give for Jesus? And this old Indian put his bow in there. The missionary said, that's not enough. Then he put his rifle in there. The missionary said, that's not enough. Then he got, got his squaw. He put his squaw in the circle and the missionary said, no, that's not enough. That's what the old Indian did. He stepped in the circle. The missionary says, that's enough. That's what God wants. That's what God wants from you. It's not your money. Not your service. He wants you.